When you start to become obsessed with something, you start to revel in every possible way you can express your rampant fandom. Now, for most of us, that's buying a shirt or something. But imagine if you had your own show. You'd probably drop a lot of little nuts, right? Steven Universe is chock full of Easter eggs, alluding to some truly great pop culture phenomenons. Whether it be an appearance of bee drills or an entire sequence taken from Cowboy Bebop, Steven Universe has offered up some super cool nuts to keep their fans on their toes and those in the know continually delighted. I'm JD at Channel Frederator, and today we've decided to showcase a few of our favorites. Some of these you may have caught, some of them maybe you haven't, but I guarantee they're all fun. Let's check them out. Regular Show in the episode Cat Fingers, Amethyst shapeshifts into a blue jay and throws out a strangely familiar one-liner. Chill it, dude. It feels like a none too subtle reference to regular show's spunky avian Mordecai. Furthermore, Cat Morris and Hilary Florido, who co-wrote the episode, previously worked on regular show, just in case there was any doubt about the intent of Amethyst's transformation. Gunter, stuffed animal. Who doesn't love Adventure Time? It's no secret that we're fans, and apparently the characters of Steven Universe are too. Those with keen eyes may have spotted a stuffed animal of Gunter, everyone's favorite denizen of the Ice Kingdom, in Sadie's bedroom. Sorry, Ice King. The little Gunter is prominently seen in the episode Sadie's song, but we like to believe he's always there to keep her company, because that's just what Gunter does. You know, when he's not turning into a monster or trying to take over the known universe. Steven's Toys not to be outdone by Sadie's adorable little Gunter. Steven himself has several toys that serve as nods to popular characters from other franchises. In the episode Future Vision, we get a glimpse of Steven's collection, and spy figures that resemble Yoshi, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, a Furby, and some Transformers. It seems like Steven has some pretty good taste. I wonder if in an alternate reality, Optimus Prime has a Steven Universe action figure. Though, something tells me Optimus is more of a Garnet kind of guy. Full House Netflix isn't the only one who returned to the world of Full House. In the episode Cheeseburger Backpack, you know, the one where Steven gets the cheeseburger backpack, there are several references to the beloved 90s sitcom. In addition to the fact that Mailman Jamie bears a passing resemblance to Danny Tanner, Steven also delivers Michelle Tanner's iconic catchphrase, you got it dude, during action. Considering the fact that the Olsen twins didn't return to reprise the role of Michelle for Fuller House, we'll gladly take Steven as their plucky replacement. Prince, Purple Rain. In the wake of the passing of pop icon and music legend Prince, we've seen numerous tributes and homages offered by some of the world's most celebrated artists and creative talent. Even before his untimely death, creators would frequently cite Prince as a strong influence on their work. Steven Universe offered its own unique homage to Prince in the episode Joyride. With Buck telling Steven, I only wanted to see you laughing in the pizza rain, an obvious reference to Prince's beloved song and album and film of the same name. Steven doesn't catch it though. <laughs> it's okay, Steven. That's what this video is for. Akira. And now we enter the multitudinous anime nods. In Cat Fingers, Steven's transformation mirrors the epic and emotionally scarring transformation of Tetsuo in the genre-defining anime classic Akira. Luckily, unlike Tetsuo, Steven didn't kill many, many, many people beforehand. Sailor Moon. I mean, who doesn't love cartoons, right? Obviously we do, and we're guessing you do, and it's pretty obvious Steven does too. Based on hints we spied in the series, we get a sense that Steven is a big fan of Sailor Moon in particular. A manga featuring the popular character can be spotted on Steven's nightstand, and that cat like does look quite a bit like Luna, Serena's cat and advisor on Sailor Moon. Furthermore, the central concept of the gems, a team of super beings who draw their power from different elemental stones, has a strong parallel to the Sailor Scouts, whose powers are reflections of the planets they represent. Steven may actually be living his favorite cartoon fantasy without even realizing it. Dragon Ball Z Speaking of parallels to popular anime manga series, how could we not talk about Dragon Ball Z? I mean, there are enough we could do a whole video on it. The gems have been known to fuse their personas and powers together to form new personalities in the heat of battle. The process of fusion is achieved via a special dance, which is also exactly how fusion is achieved by characters in Dragon Ball Z. It's a subtle reference, but a nice nod that leads us to wonder what a Saiyan gem's dance-off would look like. Similarly, the device Hopper uses to measure power is reminiscent of a scouter for Dragon Ball, which is utilized to read power levels. As anyone who's ever watch Dragon Ball Z or its subsequent incarnations can tell you, there's a lot of standing around and powering up, which means these devices sure come in handy. Much like its DBZ counterpart, the device in Steven Universe will explode if someone exceeds their expected power level, proving as ever that tech companies are always going to try and get you to upgrade to the latest edition. Oh, and for you fans of the original Dragon Ball, you know, the ones where they actually collect the Dragon Balls, there's a subtle reference in the episode Steven and the Sword Fighter, where Amethyst is flying on a cloud. This seems to be an allusion to Nimbus, little Goku's original means of transportation before he grew up, discovered he was an alien and could fly for himself. Not a bad means of transportation if you ask us. Cowboy Bebop. Can't get enough of the anime references? Neither can we! One of our favorite shows is cult classic Cowboy Bebop. A 
we were thrilled to discover the subtle reference to the series in the episode Lion 3 straight to video. When Steven and Sadie sit down to watch a video left behind by Rose, the sequence, as well as the contents of the video itself, mirrors a similar tape in the Cowboy Bebop episode Speak Like a Child. In both instances, the videotapes are meant as time capsules, giving the characters a glimpse into the world before and have a significant emotional impact, since they depict something long lost for the intended viewer. Also, both videos involve beaches, which is definitely on the lighter side for the parallel. For Steven Universe to echo this particular moment in Cowboy Bebop's history is a brilliant and poignant homage to the gateway anime. Pokemon. Speaking of the episode Future Vision, if you Pokemon fans thought that the insect-like monsters attacking Steven look familiar, you'd be quite correct. <laughs> Lame pun intended. The vicious little beasties in this episode are meant to resemble bee drills. Considering the attack happens in Steven's imagination, we can only assume their presence is brought on by the overactive flights of fancy of an intense Pokemon fan. I mean, who among us hasn't briefly fantasized about what it'd be like to encounter Pokemon in real life? I mean, hopefully your fantasies are a little more pleasant than this one. Funland Arcade. In the episode Arcade Mania, Steven encounters the game Teens of Rage, which is a blatant reference to the Sega arcade game called Streets of Rage. Furthermore, the company who allegedly makes Teens of Rage is called Carpcom, a nod to popular gaming company Capcom. Another game seen in Funland Arcade is Meat Beat Mania. The name is a play on Beat Mania, but the gameplay itself parodies Samba de Amigo. As if all of this wasn't enough, Steven Universe has to break another wall. The arcade Steven and the Gems visit, Funland, bears the same name as the arcade in the Amazing World of Gumball. Reanimator. In the episode Nightmare Hospital, wherein a doctor experiments on gem biology, we overhear a conversation that refers to another staff member, Dr. West. Committed fans of the horror genre will recognize this as a direct reference to Dr. Herbert West, the primary character of the cult classic Reanimator and its subsequent sequels. In those films, as well as the original H.P. Lovecraft story, Dr. West is known for his arcane experiments on biology, quite similar to what Dr. Maheshwaran was attempting to do with the gems in the episode. So, Fright fans who've been clamoring for a new sequel, Dr. West didn't disappear, he just got animated. Or is that reanimated? Dun dun dun! Batman. In the episode Lion 2 the movie, we get the debut of the giant penny, an object from Rose's secret armory. The penny, as well as the cave in which it's found, is a reference to another popular cave dweller, Batman, of course. A giant penny was a fixture of the Bat Cave in the comics, as well as a staple set piece in Batman the Animated Series. Reduced to a mere conversation piece in the modern era, the penny was actually a trophy scored by Batman following the defeat of a lesser known villain called the Penny Plunderer. Though the penny Plunderer didn't quite make his mark on Batman's rogue gallery the way that Joker or the Riddler have, his brief encounter with the Cape Crusader left us with one of the Batcave's most identifiable landmarks. Maybe Rose has had a brush with him too. Full Metal Alchemist In the episode Gem Drill, the scenes focusing on the cluster bear a resemblance to the souls in the Philosopher's Stone from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The way Steven deals with the situation, by having many parts of the cluster become friends and get to know each other, is similar to how Van Hohenheim from Full Metal decided to cope with his status as a living Philosopher's Stone. If it's any correlation between the to beyond the easter egg itself, it's the tears we've shed for both scenes. And there you have it, our favorite Steven Universe easter eggs. Steven Universe is a vast and fully realized world, and the people behind the show are including nods and tributes to their favorite things within the confines constantly. So there's plenty references we didn't get to. If there's an homage in the show that you particularly love, tell us in the comments. And hey, check out some of our other videos in the annotations. Don't forget to subscribe to Channel Frederator so you don't miss a thing. Remember, Frederator loves you.